Hi, this is Pat Moorhead and we are live here in Maui at Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit. 6.5 is on the road. Somebody had to do Maui, so I thought it might as well be me and my famous co-host, Daniel Newman. How are you, my friend? I love when you say I'm famous. It's actually in this chair. It's yeah. just my avatar. There we go. No, no, I mean, everything is kind of virtual these days, kind of, right? I mean, virtual, remote, all this stuff. But hey, one of the biggest uh, trends out there that we've been talking about for, I don't know, five or six years is XR, you know, VR, AR, all these different ways to merge reality with digital. Yeah, it's been a big few years. And of course, during the pandemic, everybody went home and, and there was a lot of attention brought to this space. We've seen big companies, major companies make huge pivots yeah. into this space called the metaverse, but it's not new. It's not new. And that's what we have been talking about. But what is new is we're starting to see new commercialization methods, new products being developed, and of course, new stories being told about what our lives are going to look like as the physical and digital worlds that we live in come together. Well, let's dive in here. I mean, we need, should have introduced you a little bit uh, sooner. Hugo, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk more about uh, XR and the metaverse. No, it's great. I mean, we, we had some great conversations last night, big, uh, big launches this week, and pretty exciting stuff. And I have to tell you, it's just, it, it you just keep investing and it's so good to see because this market is going to be big and the only question is is when yeah i think hugo was a bit of a victim of you and i the analyst dan and pat <laughs> that sometimes start talking about a topic or we got a guest oh i want to talk about I know, it so I know. that does happen but it has been great we've been here we've had what we're doing not we're doing nine of these interviews with so many you know great thinkers at, at qualcomm and the snapdragon team and of course you being one of them we're excited to talk about this and you've heard my little you know, early setup of, of what's going on, AR, VR, yeah. metaverse. So let's start there. We're seeing peaks, we're seeing troughs, we're seeing uh, enchantment, we're seeing everybody say it's never gonna happen. I mean, kind of, you know, you're steadily just building through this. Talk a little bit about kind of how you sure. see this space. I mean, for, for sure, I don't think this is an overnight type of technology, it's a yeah. journey, right? And uh, like we were discussing last night, I very much like the comparison with the mobile internet. You know, I started working in the early 2000s and, oh, why are we going to use data? Right. Why are we going to have a camera on a phone? <laughs> but, you know, year over year, it just gets better. And then when you look the course of uh, five years, it's just like, wow, what just happened here? Right. Right. And, and uh, I feel very much the same. Right. In 2015, the hype on VR. Right. So, oh, everyone talks about it. Okay, a little bit of a down, you know, there was a VR winter. Oh, now you have the standalone VR and Quest and Quest 2, and then, you know, it start to become yes. popular. So um, I think it's just the, the expectation that the general audience has is just like metaverse is hype. Oh, next tomorrow I'm going to be living in the digital world. No, right? It's just that these investments um, um, take time to mature. And it's just like it's a continuous progression, right? And, and I think that's where we are on. Now, to your question on, oh, is Qualcomm still investing? Yeah, that's our nature. You know, we make these uh, early bets on technology and we stick to it. If we believe in on it, we stick to it. You know, whether, you know, the news are good or bad, you know, we know it's going to happen. One more thing. Um, you know, when we think about um, um, XR, Metaverse. I actually like calling it spatial computing. Okay. Right. It's um. You think about computing um, evolution over the past decades, or even before computing, it was all mostly two D kind of uh, environments, right? Where you enter data in a two D format, right. you, a book or a computer or a phone, and you consume in a two D format, right? A, you know, a rectangular you know screen that we have today. And with um, VR and AR, it's not only 3D, it's in space. Right. So I think that, oh, is the metaverse was the hype yesterday and today it's getting, you know, somewhat um, uh, different type of uh, feedback. Uh, I don't care. I, I think I know that spatial computing is going to happen. Immersive computing is going to happen. And that's why we continue to invest. Yeah, it's, it, you know, there's a, a few benefits to having experience, okay, me being old, uh, is you see a lot of trends come along 
and you see a lot of highs and a lot of lows. And a couple things I've always learned is the highs are never as high as they should be. Yeah. And the lows are never low as they should be. And you know when you've hit it? When it gets boring, okay? <laughs> and when people are using it for things that, yeah. right? It's like, yeah, I'm doing this, Yeah. right? And, exactly. and that's when you've hit it. And people, everybody in the industry that I respect, uh, their view is it's going to happen. The only question is, when and yeah. and by whom and if i look at the hallmark of of qualcomm you really do invest in the hardest problems to solve yep uh some of the biggest hairiest problems were i mean are in wireless right yep. and very few people even know how to do that and one of the key things that, that i've seen is you're one of the few companies that actually does research okay i get that we co-mingle r d but they're very different uh, pieces of that. So, gosh, I'm editorializing a little oh, bit too much. You're doing me. No, I, I <laughs> know. I'm Dan listening impression. to myself. No, but I'm, I'm, it, you know, perception is low for the wrong reasons, yeah. which is why I want to invest in it now. So, silly me. It's always but, best to do it when the blood's in the water. No, I hear it. So, speaking of investing, you made a major announcement this week, a brand new platform. Tell everybody about it. Well, it, it's really a big milestone, a breakthrough uh, technology that we announced with the AR2, right? We had our product portfolio for XR, you know, XR1, XR2, Gen1, and, and really these were platforms that were targeted both at VR and AR for kind of right. all-in-one headsets, Right. okay? But when we think about slick, thin, fashionable, um, while immersive glasses, you have to think different. You cannot now have one platform that does VR all in one and AR. So we had to take a ground up, you know, completely new approach to uh, augmented reality. That's why we an announced AR2. Three big things about AR2. Um, AR2, as I said, ground up done for AR, and it introduces a new architecture for processing. What is this? It's split compute, where you do some of the processing in the glass, right. but majority of it, in a companion host, your phone, always in your pocket, can also be a PC. But then that's why one of the big novelties is by spreading processing, I can then lower my power because power equals size. Right. You know, if right. I want to burn five watts in my head, well, that's, I, it's going to be big. If you want to have it small, it needs to be under one watt. And that's what we achieve with AR2. And then we have, um, you mentioned, oh, we tackle the big problems. Yeah, we do. You know, split processing is one. The other is having custom silicon for some of the workloads needed. Hand tracking, head tracking, you all need that for yes. interacting. Yes. And the third one, connectivity, right? You need very fast connectivity between your glass and your host, and we're using Wi-Fi 7. So that's, that's the big news. By the way, may, strategically makes sense to me. I always thought it made sense. Putting the two together uh, seemed like it would be really hard. It would almost be like expecting the first smartphone to have all the features that it has today. And yeah. you, you and I talked about this uh, last night, which is uh, be killer at one or two things yeah. and get people to love it. And then over time, add different modalities, at different types of use cases, exactly what happened with the smartphone. So right. I, I like the move, I like the play, I like the split rendering, and I know you didn't announce this, but I'm thinking, hey, it's split in the headset and the smartphone, but how about the cloud Yeah, as well? So I mean, I, I think the world is gonna go to a split processing overall, and you, know, you also have you know, a smart watch um, routers, hey, isn't that a good place to put more processing? Right. And then, what about the base stations? Yes. And, you yes. know, the yes. mobile edge compute. So then you have now a device that can dynamically decide, where do I split processing? I can't do it all here in the glass. What's available to me? Right. Right, if I have 5G, hey, Mac. If I'm in the home router, if I have, so that's kind of how we see things um, um, evolving. But just taking a step back on what you said about use cases, right? I totally agree with what you're saying. Hey, you know, in VR, for instance, you had you know gaming as a use case, right? Even the Quest was positioned as a as a console type. But I do think that we see more and more 
verticals creating their own unique device plus um, one very nice example is a um, customer of ours called uh, Penumbra, public company. They do uh, stroke, um, stroke equi um, treatment equipment. And they say, hey, what about after the patient goes under the surgery, rehabilitation? They're using VR for rehabilitation. Interesting. With custom, you know, products for it. Right. And then it's just like, maybe, you know, boring is the wrong word. It's actually, you know, um, you're just tackling a problem today with virtual reality. You haven't, you wouldn't have thought, yeah. you know, that it would uh, be used for. I was talking to someone on your team, Hugo, here in, uh, at Snapdragon Summit, was telling me about a stroke patient that had lost some motor senses. Yeah. And using the VR to be able to like play catch with her grandson. That's right. And the ability for using that technology to sort of move her through the rehabilitation process faster because of, you know, the immersion and the opportunity to, you know, connect at that level of intimacy with her grandson and yeah. like sped yeah. her process up. And I don't know all the back, but I was like, wow, you know, that's, I never really thought about that. You know, I tend to think about it mostly in the, in the realm of gaming, sure. a little bit I in know. collab, a little I bit in some of it. Gaming seems to be what always comes to mind. And there are so many other applications. Now, I want to just kind of double click a little bit on AR1 to AR2. Okay. You know, so for everyone that's kind of here and, you know, some of our audience, yeah. it's kind of focus on what's being announced here. You mentioned yeah. some things about split rendering. So yeah. Like what are the big, like kind of big notable sure. improvements that this generation yeah. are no, going to Yeah, thanks, thanks for asking the question. Um, so AR2, because of all the goodies I, I mentioned, you know, the split processing, um, the custom IP blocks, you know, for AR and Wi-Fi, you know, seven, uh, what we see as a result is that we have half power consumption, that's how we get to one watt. Uh, we have 2.5 times more AI. Why AI? Because hey, if I'm computing in space, I need to understand the space, right? <laughs> I need to understand, oh, here's Patrick, here's right. Daniel, here's the floor, here's the walls, there's a, you know, a plant right there, there's movement, this is the lighting, a lot of AI. So that's the second one. And third is the smaller footprint. So we uh, enabled the PCBs to be 40% smaller. So kind of that's kind of the, the three main, um, I would say, value propositions of AR2 versus uh, the, the predecessor. Now, um, going a little bit tied to AR2, not a one-to-one -one correlation, but something that we are investing in parallel is the content ecosystem, right? How do I make all this technology available not only to OEMs, but to developers. So we created the Snapdragon Spaces developer platform. That's right. Uh, about six months ago, uh, we, we put it on beta. Um, and uh, we put it on, you know, using, uh, a, you know, the, 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 the predecessor platform, uh, which was cabled, right? The glass and the phone were cabled. But we're seeing a lot of developers come up with it. And now here, tied to AR2, we are announcing partnerships. Three. Um, big partnerships. One, Microsoft. I don't know if you remember, early in the year, we had a press note uh, where we talk about our collaboration in AR. Well, here's the fruit of it. Yeah. Uh, and we work very closely in, um, you know, the specs, requirements, and, and so forth with Microsoft. So that's one. Uh, number two, um, Adobe, right? Hey, if you want content and you want hey, not only the, the tech developer to create content, if you want every, anyone to right. create content, well, you need someone like Adobe, you know, non-coder type. Uh, so uh, you saw Adobe, you know, on stage uh, with me. And, um, and then Niantic, right? I mean, talk about AR. Exactly. Right, and uh, so Niantic is uh, uh, working closely with us in a variety of fronts. Uh, first is, uh, outdoor AR, how do you make a, a device for outdoor AR that work for their first party content? They have um, a mapping platform that we're integrating to Spaces. So now if I'm a Spaces developer, I can use uh, Niantic's Lightship VPS. So these three big you know, collaborations are part of uh, what we announced uh, here at the Snapdragon Summit. Yeah, I'm glad you hit on the software ecosystem. And as if we've seen from any technology device, I mean, it takes a village, yeah. right? Uh, you can't just build something in, in the ether without everybody coming in. I mean, that's every platform. 
So talk a little bit about software. You talk a little bit about your space's ecosystem, but obviously there need to be device makers yeah. that, that, that come in as well. Can you talk about, do you have a lot of device makers who are showing interest in uh, yeah. AR2? Yeah, no we have. I mean, there, there are a few that I showed uh, on a slide, you know, the logos, um, like, um, you know, Lenovo, LG, Xiaomi, Oppo, um, some new interesting um, companies like um, um, QNLQ, it's uh, an entity Docomo, uh, okay. company that uh, was created for AR. So you're going to see a few logos there, or you saw a few logos there, That's right. that uh, were quite interesting. Um, there are others that we can't disclose, but I think the hardware um, is going to come strong, um, is going to, like we discussed, the same as the mobile internet, you know, I think you're going to see OEMs focusing on different you know, types of devices, different tar target markets, and continue to evolve. Now, when it comes to, um, to the content, um, one of the challenges, you know, that we have as, um, as um, you know, industry ecosystem is like, hey, they're vertical type um, ecosystem. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people that want to create hardware, they want to create content, and want to have like a common platform that can scale across multiple, you know, devices and multiple uh, distribution methods. You know, and I want to be locked into one app store right, or... Right. So that, that's where Snapdragon Spaces comes in with um, an open platform. We follow OpenXR, which is one of the standards, you know, that is being um, leading in terms of uh, spatial computing. So we follow it, we put extensions, we have partnerships like uh, Lightship from Niantic, and, uh, and we made that available to, to developers. It's amazing. Uh, the kind of feedback we're getting from developers, even though you know we're just uh, starting, but that's what we want to push, and we want to um, promote something that can be used across the world, you know, China, U.S., Europe, uh, emerging markets, enterprise, consumer. So that's what we're doing with the software uh, ecosystem. That's great. Yeah, it's a uh, really exciting times, Hugo, and uh, I want to say thanks so much for joining us here at the Snapdragon Summit. It's very interesting because, like I said, this is such an inflection point, and I think what you helped do is kind of reinforce that this is a journey. This is one of those technologies, and by the way, I like spatial computing that is yeah. going to change industries. That's right. You've got really important mobile innovation that's going to connect each of these ecosystems too, the mobile, mobile device that sits in our pocket, you know, the one that we may or may not wear. There's connections that can be made to the vehicle. You know, That's we talked right. to Cristiano about yeah. that and there's going to be a lot of AR applications there. And of course with uh, mobile compute, there's going to be very likely integrations there as well. So, you know, we're excited here and we hope that you'll come back and spend a little bit more time with us uh, next year. Tell us what's going on or sooner. No doubt. Yeah. Sounds Looking good. Looking forward and uh, very exciting. Uh, um, year or years ahead of us, but um, it's going to happen. And, um, you know, AR2 is a key technology to make it happen. Hugo sure. Swart, thanks for joining us. Everyone out there, we appreciate you tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Watch all nine of our episodes. Of course, they'll be going out over the few days here following the live announcements made at Snapdragon Summit. For Patrick Moore and myself, it's time to say goodbye. We appreciate you tuning in. See you later.